would it be a good idea to use high voltage, dual phase, constant on time controllers? How about right now? Okay, maybe not right now. You're watching a chalk talk. But if you're designing a distributed high current power system, such as an electric vehicle or communications infrastructure, a dual phase constant on time controller may be the way to go. And bonus, what if you could stack them and get eight phases out of the controller? Yeah, now we're talking. <laughs> Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. In this episode of Chalk Talk, I sit down with Chris Romano from Microchip to discuss the what, where, and how of Microchip's high voltage, dual phase, constant on time controllers. We investigate the stacking capabilities of the MIC2132 controller, how these controllers compare with other solutions on the market, and how you can take advantage of these solutions in your next design. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find even more information about this topic from Microchip. Hi, Chris. Thank you so much for joining me. Hi, Amelia. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. We're talking about high voltage stackable dual phase constant on time controllers today. So give us the rundown, Chris. What kind of features are we talking about when it comes to the MIC2132 and the MIC2133? So the MIC2132 and 33 are both dual phase analog power supply controllers. They are considered a high voltage input device running up to 75 volt input. The two devices are very, very similar. The main difference between them is that the 2132 can be what we call stacked to cascaded number of phases greater than two. The MIC2133 is strictly its two-phase standalone device. So I'm not going to go through every bullet point here, but both of these parts use an adaptive constant on-time control type architecture. They have current sharing for each of the two phases of each device share internally. And in the case of the 2132, when you stack devices for more than two phases, we force all of those additional phases to share as well. The standalone two-phase 2133 also has a provision for phase shedding and discontinuous conduction mode for light load efficiency. They both have capability of supporting a droop function. If you need to use droop, you will know what that is. Uh, ability to work with a microcontroller unit. Biggest sort of selling point to these two parts is they're automotive qualified and they have a voltage range that supports a lot of automotive applications. So that's kind of where our focus is. Okay. So Chris, can we take a closer look at the specs for the MIC2132? Yes. So the MIC2132 is the version of this part, which is stackable. So we could create any multi-phase solution, two, four, six, up to eight phases proprietary patented internal circuitry that guarantees current sharing between phases. We have a programmable switching frequency, which allows a good amount of customization when it comes to the external components. External programmable soft start, that's sort of a standard feature, programmable current limit. One thing about both the 2132 and the 33 is we co-package the boost diodes internally, so that'll keep your BOM cost down and simplify your layout, because now you don't have to route to these two external components. So, Chris, you said that the MIC2132 can be stacked earlier. So, can we talk a little bit about that? We can. The reason that we want stacked parts is to increase the output current. Basically, what we mean by stacking is that you can have any number of phases as multiples of two up to eight phases. So, we start with a single MIC2132 is a two-phase device. And then by configuring it as a primary we can add additional MIC2132s to the overall power solution in groups of two phases. So in this block diagram that's shown, we have two devices. So this would be a four-phase solution. We could add a third device for a six-phase solution. We could also add a fourth device for up to an eight-phase solution. The communication between the primary and the secondary devices is controlled just by uh, connecting these three pins, on-time request, remote feedback, and next phase input pins. That communicates all of the intelligence from the primary to however many secondary devices you have, which will enable the phases to automatically adjust their phase spacing to be equal, depending on the number of phases. 
So Chris, how does the MIC 2133 compare in terms of specifications? So the MIC 2133 is essentially the same part, but it is not stackable. And the reason that it's not stackable is because the pins that would be used for the stacking intelligence, we are using instead to provide an option for phase shedding and our hyper light load mode of operation. So where this part would work is if you have a load that's going to be somewhere between full load and off. And if your load is off or at very, very light currents, this part has the phase shedding and hyper light load operation modes, which will help you reduce power consumption at those light load currents. Okay. And Chris, this solution can work with an external MCU, right? That's right. We could take an external MCU and it would basically be sort of a digital telemetry wraparound. So we would be able to monitor operating parameters of the power supply, input voltage, output voltage, output current. And we would also be able to control things like the enable phase shedding. And then we would be able through that microcontroller, we could then interface to a digital system. Okay, so can you give me an example of a real-world design using these solutions? One of the bigger target real-world designs would be as an intermediate bus in a server-type application, typically a 48 to 12-volt high-current-type situation. I have not physically worked with one of these type solutions as of yet, but we go over the next slide. We have an automotive PCIe over cable reference design that has been built and tested. In that case, we're using the device at 12 volts in, 0.84 volts out at around 25 amps. And that's to supply the processor core of the PCIe switch. The MIC2133 itself, plus all of its surrounding components, are automotive qualified. So, Chris, what kind of applications or markets do you see these solutions being a good fit for? The big selling point in this part, in my opinion, is the input voltage is very high. So it enables us to go anywhere from data center type applications all the way up to the higher power battery input type applications, e-scooters, e-mobility, electric vehicle type things. And those would be the higher voltage type things all the way down to the lower input voltage, sort of high volume type applications like consumer communications equipment, data center type processor power. Okay, so Chris, if my audience wants to get started using the MIC2132 or the MIC2133, where should they start? Well, we do have eval boards that are available in stock. If the customer wants to investigate these parts, I would recommend that first they go to the website and download the data sheet and any other associated documentation. Then they can choose whether they want the 2132 or 33. They're orderable through Mauser. The part numbers shown here, these EV66 part numbers, that is the orderable customer part number. Customer is interested in these parts, take a look at the documentation. If it looks good, go ahead and order an eval board. If you have any questions from there, give us a call and we can talk to you more. Fantastic. Now, how does the MIC2132 and the 33 compare to other solutions on the market? The 2132-33 have a different sort of control architecture in constant on time versus the competitors, which tend to be more of a current mode type architecture. The advantage of the constant on time is it's a little bit less sensitive to parasitics in the circuit. So it's a little bit easier to work with. And also our input voltage tends to be a little bit higher than the competition would be. That's good for installing some margin into designs or even operating at a higher nominal voltage than the competitors will operate at. Fantastic. Well, Chris, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for having me. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find even more information about this topic from Microchip. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talks section of EE Journal. If you can't miss it, it's right across the top or head on over to YouTube, youtube.com slash eejournal.